Hi, and thanks for choosing to watch this C-Logic video in which we will look at setting up products within Microsoft's Dynamics CRM. When working with opportunities, quotes, orders and invoices, you can call upon products that have already been set up in the system if you don't want to rely simply on the use of write-in products. The trick is setting up those products, and to do that there are a number of steps you have to go through, which can feel slightly complicated depending on the complexity of your price list. Within Microsoft CRM, you can have a number of different price lists, you can apply discounts depending on volume, and you can specify your products with different units of measure. This video will try to guide you through the stages of setup. The first thing to do is to navigate to Settings, Business, Product Catalog, which you'll only have access to if you are the system administrator or your system administrator has given you the correct administrative rights. The screen itself recommends you to set up your products in the order suggested, but I'm going to come back to discount lists later on. Let's imagine that I sell bottles, and I might want to sell single bottles, packs of 20 bottles, and packs of 50 bottles. I might have several different types of bottle, so I want to include them all in a standard price list, along with other products I might sell. These other products might also be sold with different units of measure. So the first thing we do is set up our unit group. Note that a good explanation of this section's aims is given here. We already have some unit groups for our other products, but we need one that relates to our bottles. So let's click New in the ribbon and give it a name and a primary unit. In this case, one bottle. Click OK and we can now add additional units of measure. Click on Units and you will see our primary unit listed. This will be fine for single units, but we want to add 20 and 50 packs, so click Add New Unit in the ribbon and give it a name, the quantity, and select the primary unit. You can repeat for the 50 pack by clicking Save and New. Once you've done all the units you require, then click back on General and select Save and Close. Our new unit group is now listed along with the others. Click back on Product Catalogue and the next suggested step is to create a price list. So let's have a look at that. You'll notice that I already have a standard price list, but it's very easy to add a new one by clicking New in the ribbon and filling in the information. However, let's just go back and look at my ready-made standard price list. Once saved, it becomes active, but I can deactivate it and I can also set effective dates for my price lists. The key now is to populate the price list items, but you cannot do that until you've actually set up the products, so we close out of this screen and go back to our product catalogue and choose products. This area is now key, bearing in mind our use of units. Notice that we already have some products set up, but if I look at widgets, notice that I can sell these as single items or 100 packs, but I actually only have one product called widgets. So let's go ahead now and do this for our product called Bottles. Click New in the ribbon and the New Product screen will appear. There is a slight peculiarity here in that it looks like this is where you input the product information. Well, you sort of do, but this area sets the basis for the items that will go in the price list, which are added in the price list items on the left. Fill in the mandatory information in the general area, which sets out the foundations for the product.
In costs, don't be fooled that this is what you will sell at. It isn't, although the fields do have a bearing if you choose a particular pricing method based on cost in the next screen which we'll see under pricing. The only mandatory field is decimal supported, which indicates whether the product can be split. We can't sell half a bottle and we don't want to split our packs, so we'll say zero. Click save and for the moment we will ignore the advisory price list warning. Now go to price list items and click add new price list item in the ribbon. Now fill in the information and we'll start with our single unit. The quantity selling option defines whether whole, partial or both types of quantities can be specified in the quantity field of opportunity product quote, order and invoice product records. In pricing, the pricing method is important and depending on what you choose, the fields will change to allow you to enter the correct information and rounding may come into play. This is where the pricing can be driven based on the costs as discussed in the previous screen. We'll go with the simple currency amount, so we enter a figure and click Save and New to enter our 20 pack and repeat for our 50 pack. Remember at this point that our currency amount is now for the 20 pack because you will choose a quantity of 1. 20 pack when creating an opportunity for 20 bottles. Notice that we can also specify substitutes for our products if we have run out of stock and now we can select a default price list now that we have linked price list items. Once complete we can save and close our products area and if we go back to our standard price list we can now see our price list items against it. Any active products are now available for selection from opportunity, quote, order and invoice products. I mentioned at the beginning of this video about discounts. When you can set up discount levels and apply a discount to a product, you may then want to have a standard price list with non-discounted products or you may set up another price list which is your discount list which is only used for certain customers or at certain times for example or you could apply your discounts to your standard list which means a discount would be applied purely based on volume. Let's suppose we want to give a discount on a volume purchase of single bottles which will be given whenever the standard price list is selected. Let's go back to product, product catalog and click on discount lists. Click new in the ribbon, give your discount list a name and specify the type of discount. On selected, click OK. Now go to the discounts area on the left and click Add New Discount. And then fill in the fields. Let's say that if anybody buys more than 1,000 bottles, they will get a 5% discount. Save the discount and then also save and close the discount list. Now navigate back to products. Click bottles. 
and then price list items and select the one bottle item and click edit. You can now apply your discount list and save everything down. This implies that the volume discount will be applied to the one bottle product. When this product is now selected in as an opportunity, quote, order or invoice product and the quantity is greater than a thousand, the discount will be automatically applied. Looking at this opportunity, I'm now able to select my bottle product. and I will enter a quantity of 1500. Once I've saved and closed, because I've entered a quantity of 1500, it has automatically calculated a 5% discount. Obviously, if you've been using units of measure as discussed earlier, you would have to weigh up the best way of using discounts. Well, there we are. As you can see, it is quite complicated to do initial product setup but this is because of the flexibility of products and pricing that Microsoft CRM provides. You'll soon get your head around it and you can actually keep it very simple if required. Remember to always read the help files if you have any problems, but in the meantime, thanks for watching this C-Logic video.